How's it going everyone? Welcome back to my channel. This week's video turned my brain into soup. Um, what I'm doing in this video is I'm going to be turning a ordinary Kindle into a Death Knight sculpture. I don't have much more to say about it, so let's hop right into it. Our candidate for this makeover is this Ken doll, who I believe was a dentist when I purchased him. Uh, spoilers, he's not going to be a dentist once I'm done. But anyway, to get started, I'm removing his factory paint, and because he has molded on hair, that really helped cut down a lot of prep time for this project. I decided that I wanted to change his body proportions a bit, because I just felt like his legs were just really short, and because I wanted to bulk him out, I wanted to change that. So I'm lengthening his limbs here by first sawing <laughs> sawing them in half uh, in two different places, both at the mid-thigh as well as the mid-shin-calf region. I actually broke two different saw bands doing this. I think my next big purchase is going to be a rotary tool because I hate using this jeweler saw, but I persevered and ended up with these little leg segments. Because his limbs are hollow on the inside, I'm stuffing them with these cotton balls to help give the glue something to stick to. And once I have those glued down, I'm stuffing a toothpick in there, almost like a new leg bone, to try to hold the two segments together. For the center part of his leg, I'm shoving some tin foil in there to act as a stopper because it's a lot more stiff and sturdy than the cotton balls. And I'm trimming down the toothpick to get the right length. And once I have everything set the way I want it, I shove the cotton balls in there and start gluing everything together. I use more cotton balls and hot glue to fill in the gaps around the toothpick. And after I have that lay completed, you can see here the difference in length before and after doing this process. And now you may be thinking, wow, Randy, that sure was a lot of work for not that big of a difference. And you know what? I kind of agree with you, but I felt like it looked better this way, so hopefully it was worth it. Next, I'm stealing the rib cage from this bad anatomy bird skeleton and turning it into a chest piece. This is actually a recommendation I got from some of you on my dollar store sculpture video when I mentioned that I had a bunch of these bird torsos lying around that I didn't know what to do with. So I decided to take it and turn it into a breastplate. Because there are these big gaps between his little kind of washboard chest and the shape of the cage, I've filled up that space with some more cotton balls. Also going to issue a quick warning, if you're using hot glue on cotton balls and any of that hot glue covered cotton ball material touches your hands, it is extremely hard to get off, so it just stays stuck there burning you for a while. So uh, be careful if you decide to do this. Once that's all glued down, we can start adding clay and get into the real bulk of the project, which is the sculpting. I think this is by far the most sculpting I have ever done for a single project. I just have been in that kind of mood lately. Ever since my dollar store doll sculpture, I've just been in the mood to make sculptures. I just think they're really fun and it typically gets rid of the need to make garments, which is my least favorite thing <laughs> about doll customizing. So I would rather spend weeks sculpting a suit of armor than make a single outfit, it turns out. But I really had a lot of fun with this. So the reason why I started this project is because I have another very specific idea in mind for a sculpture that I want to make that is very, very ambitious for my current skill level, I think, because I'm not the most talented and experienced sculptor in the world. I've, I've made a lot of boobs and 
kind of mostly that. I think a lot of the sculpting that I've done is just giving dolls boobs. And so I felt like I need a little bit more practice and kind of get a gauge for what I'm capable of before I dive into this more ambitious project. Another thing that was really nice about this project is that it gave me the opportunity to use a doll that I really thought was just going to sit around naked in my stock box forever because I really just bought this guy to steal his outfit and I didn't really have a good use for a Ken doll with this little mobility. But the cool thing about sculptures is that mobility really does not matter. So I really feel like a whole new world has opened up for me because these Barbies with very little points of articulation are a lot more affordable than dolls with more joints. And so it's, it's kind of exciting to have a new range of things open up to me for dolls that I could use. So because this guy is supposed to be a death knight of sorts, I really wanted to beef him up a bit to give him more of a warrior's build, I suppose. And also he has like armor on on top of his body, so he's gonna be a little bit bulkier than the sort of thin, narrow frame that this doll came with. Now I'm just thinking about how many of these bad anatomy torsos that I own, and I really wanna make a lady knight next. I think that'll be really fun, but I have to give myself a little bit of time because A, I don't think you guys wanna see me just sculpt another knight back to back, and also, this was a lot of work. <laughs> this was a lot of work and I think I need a little break, I think <laughs> my next video is gonna be a slightly simpler project just because uh, this one made me feel a little bit bonkers towards the end there. So I did look at various reference images while I was working on this just to make sure I had, you know, the basic elements of <laughs> what would go into armor. But I mean, ultimately it's very stylized and very fantasy. So I wasn't really terribly concerned with accuracy <laughs> or practicality. I think this little torso tummy bit, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a nice strong manly word, the tummy. Uh, <laughs> I think my favorite part to work on was this midsection bit right here because I was kind of going for this idea of armor inspired by anatomical models. So you have the rib cage and then this stomach bit is like the muscles, you know? So it has that kind of stringy look that muscles have. It was sort of, I was thinking about, you know the armor in the movie Dracula from 1992 where it has this weird like muscly kind of look that's like a little bit gross, but I just thought it'd be cool. You know, there's something kind of intimidating and freaky I think about being like, this is what the inside of your body looks like, <laughs> you know? Next up, I'm working on his shoulder pauldrons. This was a very nerve wracking part of the process because it demanded probably the most symmetry of any of this project. Um, very similar to when I'm sculpting a pair of boobs. Uh, they are sisters and not twins, but I do try my best to get them as even as possible. At this point, I feel like these, these shoulder pauldrons look so much like mushrooms and they're only gonna get more mushroom-like until they're completed, but it did give me another idea for this like forest protector sort of character that has these like mushroom shoulder pauldrons. Like I feel like that'd be so cute, 
but I have no idea when I'm going to get around to making that because I have a lot of things that I'm doing. But one of these days, I'm going to make a little forest night. For this project, I use this little pointy silicone tool a lot in order to get everything sort of smooth together because this clay doesn't like to smooth into itself as easily as some of the other clay I've used in the past. So it was largely that tool and my fingers to do the most sculpting on this project. Once the shoulder pieces were done, I decided to add this little skull embellishment to the center of them just to sort of cover up that awkward bit where they come together and to sort of bring out the whole like Death Knight vibe that I'm going for here. Some of the other Death Knight designs that I looked at for reference had truly so many skulls on them, like nearly a comical amount of skulls. Uh, I only used two in mine. For the joining piece in the back, I decided to harvest the top vertebrae from this bird skeleton and glue them in the center here. Because I didn't want the vertebrae to just abruptly stop, I decided to sculpt the rest of the spine down the back of the torso piece. I did my best to replicate the shape of the vertebrae. Um, I feel like I probably could have done this bit better if I was a better sculptor, <laughs> to be frank, but I still think that once everything is painted, it doesn't stand out too bad. And you know, even if it does, it's on the back, so it could be worse. So spoilers, I don't end up giving this guy a helmet because I really like his face sculpt and I didn't want to cover it up, but I like to imagine that if, you know, this were proper armor and he had head protection, uh, like the spine piece would like kind of like connect to the helmet and maybe it'd be like a cool sort of skull thing going on. I don't know how feasible that is, but I, I think it'd be cool. Now I'm just continuing that sort of muscle fiber motif on the back and adding the little lip where the top part of the armor overlaps the bottom part. I'm realizing now that I probably <laughs> should have googled what the anatomy of a suit of armor and like what all the names of the bits are before I started so I could sound more informed, but I didn't get around to that. Now I could start sculpting out the thighs, so I want to make him a little bit more thick because, you know, he's out here fighting medieval battles, <laughs> so... <laughs> He's hitting quads. Um, I don't know. I just thought it would make more sense for his proportions for him to have a little bit more leg meat so he wouldn't be too top heavy. Um, but it is a little bit funny because he has this like little tiny hips. So I couldn't make him too, too thick, but I tried my best to make him proportional. <laughs> Once his legs were sculpted, I decided to hot glue his hip joints in place because I didn't really need to move his legs around anymore. After that, I decided to bounce back up and work on his gauntlets for a little bit. These probably added the most time onto the project because I struggled for a while to get something that I was happy with. I ended up doing a lot of futzing around off camera, especially with this like hand bit because I really want to do something more detailed with it, like individual like fingers and stuff, and it just like was not happening. So gave up on that and moved on to adding these chunky little strap details, you know, just to sort of give an idea of how this would fasten around the arm. This is another bit where I feel like if I was a more experienced sculptor, I would have liked to do something a little bit more intricate, but that just wasn't going to happen at this point in time. But I think after I sanded everything down, it came together in a way that I'm happy with. For his other arm, I decided that I didn't want to make the same gauntlet twice, so I decided to make this 
like sword gauntlet for his other arm and I realized that it'd probably be horribly impractical, but I thought it'd be a cool way to incorporate a weapon in his design without having to like sculpt new hands for him to be like, you know, like holding a sword or something. After struggling with his gauntlets for a while, it felt really good to move on to something that was a bit easier. So I'm just doing his little loin pieces. I don't know, really know. <laughs> Big surprise, Randy doesn't know what these are called, but you can see with your eyes what I'm doing. It's, it's these bits, you know, <laughs> the waist bits. I think I ended up using about half a package of DOS modeling clay on this project and he, he ended up being really heavy, especially top heavy, so it was very interesting trying to work on him while like holding onto his legs because he wanted to just like lean out of my hand the entire time. Another interesting challenge that he posed while I was working on him was the fact that I could not pose him. So because he was a rigid sculpture, I couldn't do the thing that I usually do in order to like work around my tripod and camera setup, which is I just kind of like bend the doll's like legs around in order to get them to fit where my workspace is and where the camera is able to see them. So because I wasn't able to do that, I kind of struggled a bit to keep this lad in frame. Now I'm just getting his belt on there, and I'm pretty sure this is still just called a belt, and it doesn't have any fancy armor names, but who knows, I could be wrong. And I'm adding the other skull that I had mentioned previously. I really like these little skulls. I think they're kind of cute and cartoony, which might not really fit the vibe, but it's honestly the only way I know to do it, so. Now we're moving on to the shin guards, the leg bits, the leg gauntlets. Uh, I think every single thing that I just said was incorrect, but you know, the bits for the lower half of his legs. And honestly, it felt so satisfying to get like the last bits of exposed plastic covered up. It really, really started to feel like I was on the home stretch at this point. And once I finish his knee guards, I can move on to the feet bits. And once I've done with that, the sculpting portion is about 95% of the way done. Because his sword broke off while I was sanding it, I decided to wait until after I was done sculpting everything to reattach it because I didn't want it getting in the way. So at this point, I thought I was done sculpting things on this lad. So I started basing him out in black but I realized by the end of this process that I did in fact want to give him horns. So I did most of that off camera, but here you could see I used wire as the base armature for this sculpture. Then I made a rough horn shape on top of that. Then finally I went over that and added all the details that took an extra day and a half of work. All right, so now we can actually get into the painting. So I kept it pretty simple because ultimately it is mostly an all black ensemble, but here I'm hitting it with some dry brushing of a mixture of light gray and silver paint to give it a little bit of a sheen and help bring out the details a bit. For my accent color, I decided to go with purple because I think purple and black just go really well together. I mean, black kind of can go with anything, but for this sort of evil vibe, I thought black and purple would be a good mix. And it kind of reminds me of the dragon from Sleeping Beauty, even though I'll be real with you, I've never seen that movie because it just wasn't in my rotation as a kid, but that dragon design goes really hard, so I like to steal from it. <laughs> I decided to add a little purple gradient on these waist pieces because I thought it'd help sort of break up the look so it wasn't so flat and monocolor. 
and I want to keep the purple pretty desaturated so that it wouldn't, you know, stand out too much. You know, I want to stand out a little bit, but not like crazy. I was about to say that a mostly black ensemble would help for like stealth purposes, but this is full armor. So I, I just know this man is so loud <laughs> when he walks. There's no way he isn't. I also added some light gray dry brushing on his horns to help make sure that the details would stand out. I'm very proud of how these horns turned out, y'all. I think they are by far the most detailed horns I've ever made. Now we can finally move on to the face up. And I gotta say, y'all, this is probably the best man face that I've ever painted, like, by a mile. I really enjoy painting these Barbie sculpts because they're so detailed and because the features are so small it actually makes it easier for me because there's just less space to cover and I don't know like creates less opportunities for me to mess up. His original printed on face was put on really wonky so his like eyes were way above where his actual eye molds were and I feel like it really did a disservice to how handsome this lad is. Like when you actually put his features where they belong, he looks really good. It was fun making a doll with a more natural look like this. Like typically I make characters that are wearing makeup in some capacity. So it was nice trying to imitate life a little bit more than I usually do. I decided to keep his molds on hair and try to, you know, paint it as it was as opposed to gluing yarn wefts on top of it because I thought it'd be an interesting challenge and for a heavily sculpted doll like this, I thought it would kind of go with the whole look because everything else is sculpted so why can't his hair be sculpted on as well? I'm gonna take a moment while I'm blushing his face to say, if you watch this far and you like this video, consider liking it. It really helps me out a lot. And if you wanna see more art videos from me, consider subscribing. I have a lot of projects planned for these coming weeks. And if you don't wanna miss any of those, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you have anything that you wanna see me do, or if you just have any thoughts and feelings, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. I really love hearing from you guys. And this video is proof that I do listen to you sometimes. <laughs> Once I've finished blushing his face, I go ahead and add the catch lights with some white paint on the tip of a needle. Then I hit his face with several very watered down layers of liquid sealant. I use matte Mod Podge for this, by the way. So now we can get started on his base. So I took this hunk of styrofoam and broke it into this sort of organic shape. This is a technique that I learned from various D&D terrain makers. Then I drilled some holes into the bottom of his feet in order to insert some toothpicks to create a more solid means of connection between him and the base. Because I didn't want the sides of this like hunk of rock, I guess, to just look like broken styrofoam, I'm going over it with these thin sheets of clay in order to smooth that over the top to create a more rock-like texture and hide the little bumpy lumpies. Once I have the sides covered, I can start covering up the top. And for this, I'm just working in little sections and adding this grass texture. This is the same technique that I used for the base of my bat hybrid girl sculpture. <laughs> Once again, a very satisfying process because of its effort to pay off ratio. Next, I want to make some arrows to have sticking into the ground. So I'm using a needle and adding some clay onto the end to create the little like feathered ends of the arrows, just like a little approximate shape. And I stuck them into the ground where I thought they would look good. It took me a few tries to iron out the placement, but I landed on this. Then I wanted to make a severed head to go on the ground because I remember that I had this BTS doll head that I removed the neck hole from for some reason. And I stuffed it full of tin foil to make it a little bit more sturdy. 
before I could start adding clay to it. So first I'm just filling in that gaping hole at the bottom of his head before I start making him look... I don't know how I could describe what this looks like in the very beginning, but I'm just smushing clay over the top of his hair stubble. I decided that I didn't need to remove it because I'm sculpting a helmet on this lad, so I just went right over the top of it. I think part of why I wanted to give him a helmet was because I felt bad that I didn't give my main boy a helmet. Because I just think, realistically, if you're going to be wearing armor, you probably want to have your head protected. But I just think helmets are ugly, so I didn't want to give our main character one. And also, I felt like giving this head a helmet would kind of help remove some of his identity. And I felt like for some reason it would make it less graphic that he was a severed head on the ground if he, if you could really see any real defining features about the man who owned the head before he died. You can see here I'm giving him a neck stump because, you know, he kind of needed one <laughs> before starting to actually give this helmet some shape. I will say, I don't know which BTS boy this head belonged to, but it did feel a little bit weird doing this to a doll of a actual man that exists somewhere. It felt a little bizarre, but I mean, in the end, none of, none of the BTS boys left behind. I will say though, because I didn't remove his face first before working on this, he was just staring at me the whole time that I was doing this. And it was, it was just mildly upsetting. Once I had this pretty simple helmet roughed out, I sanded it off camera and then I drilled a hole into the side of his head so that I could insert a toothpick to both have a handle to make it easier to paint him as well as create an anchor point for me to uh, apply him to the base once he's finished. Honestly, it was so funny the whole time I was painting him because I just could not stop thinking about him as like a forbidden cake pop because <laughs> I'm, just <laughs> I'm just picturing holding this severed head made out of like fondant if it was edible and how upsetting that would be to eat and it just it, it kept cracking me up while I was working on it. I finished him off by creating a shadow over his eyes and adding some metallic paint to his helmet and then I was able to insert him into the styrofoam. Now I'm adding paint to the base and it's a pretty simple straightforward paint job. Stone gray for the stone and green for the grass. Not really breaking any new ground here. And I gotta say painting this grass was an absolute pain because there's so many little crannies to get into and I'm pretty sure I still miss some spots by the end there. I decided to go with red for the feathered bits on the arrows and it was very satisfying to add these little pops of color. And off camera I add these little cape bits to help make his posture seem less weird. And with that, he's done. Here are the final results. This is another project where I got very tired in the middle of it, but I think that he came out so fucking cool honestly i'm very happy with him and if you also think he came out really cool he will be available for purchase upon my uploading of this video so you can find the link to my store in the description Alrighty, that is it for this video i hope to see you all next time love you bye